Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It's so good to see you all and to be celebrating this Shabbat of Chol HaMoed Sukkot, of the intermediate days of the festival of Sukkot. So um, we begin our service tonight with our opening Zemirah, the sun on the treetops. The sun on the treetops no longer is seen. Come gather to welcome the Sabbath, a queen. Behold her descending, the holy, the blessed. And with her the angels of peace and of rest. Draw near, draw near, and hear. Our Sabbath bride, peace also to you, you angels of peace. And now we invite Carol to come forward to lead us in Birkat HaNehot, which is the blessing of Shabbat lights. Come, let us welcome the Sabbath. May its radiance illumine our hearts as we kindle these tapers. Light is the symbol of the divine. The eternal God is our light and our salvation. Light is the symbol of the holiness within each of us. The human spirit is the light of God. Light, light is the symbol of the divine law, where the, the commandment is the lamp and the true law is the light. Light is the symbol of Israel's mission. As it is written, I have set you for a covenant of the people, for a light unto the nations. Therefore, in the spirit of our ancient tradition that hallows and unites Israel in all lands and all nations, we now kindle the Sabbath light. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaAlom Ashir Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav V'Tivunu Lahadlik Ner Shel Shabbat. We praise you, eternal God, ruler of the universe, who hallows us through laws and ethical teachings and commands us to kindle the Sabbath lights. May God, God bless us with Sabbath joy. May God, God bless us with Sabbath holiness. May God, God bless us with Sabbath peace. Amen. The Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kreshanu b'mitzvotah V'tzivanu Lehadlik ne lehadlit Our service continues now on page 30 of our, of our prayer book. Creator of the universe, we have entered our sanctuary on this Shabbat to hallow your name and to offer unto you our prayers of thanksgiving. The work, the week of toil has ended. The time of rest has come. You have given us the blessing of labor so that by our work we may fashion things of use and beauty. May the fruits of our labors be acceptable unto you. Together we say, Find us going from strength to strength, so that through your guiding spirit we may be helped to ever worthier work. Make us conscious of our obligation to you and of the opportunities for service which you have put within our reach. Help us to use our powers for the benefit of others, so that the lives of many people may be made better through the work of our hands. We pray responsively. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. How shall I come before God? How shall I express praise and gratitude to our Creator? We have been told what is good and what God requires of us. To be justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Have we not all one maker? Did not one God create us all? Why do we behave by setting one against the other? 
Proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Let justice flow up as the waters, and righteousness like the mighty The Kabbalat Shabbat, the service for the welcoming of the Sabbath, is concluded. We stand now for the call to worship the Baruchu. Baruchu et Adonai HaMavorach. Praise the eternal God to whom all praise is due. Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Va'ed. Let us praise the eternal God to whom all praise is due, now and forever. find you. You are as close to us as breathing, and yet you are farther than the most distant star. You are as mysterious as the vast solitudes of the night, and yet you are as familiar to us as the light of the sun. Even to Moses you said, you cannot see my face, but I will make all my goodness pass before you. So does your goodness pass before us in the realm of nature and in the varied experiences of our lives. Together, when justice burns like a flame within us, when love equals willing sacrifice for us, when to the last we'll measure the suffering of our hearts, when to the last we'll measure the suffering of our hearts, Together we say, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Eternal is our God, the Eternal God is one. Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. Let us praise God who rules in glory forever and ever. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kevod, Malchuto Le'olam Ba'ed.
eternal truth is that you alone are God and there is none else. The righteous of all nations re rejoice in your love and exalt in your justice. Let them beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Let nation not lift up sword against nation nor learn war anymore. You shall not or your sister in your heart. The same stranger that sojourns with you shall be accepted as your equal, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Why do you crush my people and oppress the poor, asks God. Sukkot Michamocha, and it's based upon the melody of the Hodo, Hodu Ladonai Kito Kile Alam Chasdo, with which during the Hallel, the Lulav is waved in six directions. So here we are, you've come on just, and you've joined us just on the right Shabbat to hear something that you won't hear until next year. So thank you so much. We continue now on uh, page 36. Cause us, eternal God, to lie down in peace and to awaken each morning to renewed life and strength. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Help us to order our lives by your counsel and lead us in the paths of righteousness. Be a shield about us, protecting us from hatred and war, from pestilence and sorrow. Together, curve within us the inclination to do evil, and shelter us with the embrace of your love. Guard our going out and our coming in unto life and peace from this time forth and forevermore. We praise you, O God, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over our people Israel, and over all the world.
the people of Israel shall keep Shabbat, observing Shabbat throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the people of Israel forever. We pray together at the bottom of page 37. Eternal is your power, O God. You are mighty to save. In loving kindness, you sustain the living. In the multitude of your mercies, you preserve us all. You uphold the falling and heal the sick. You free the captives and keep it faith with your children in death as in life. Who is like you, almighty God, author of life and death, source of salvation? We praise you, for you have implanted within us eternal life. Eternal source of knowledge, you have endowed us with reason and understanding. We pray for the light of your truth for insights into your ways and for the strength to banish from our hearts every unworthy desire. Forgive us when we sin and pardon our failings. May those who have lost their way come again to know your love and turn to you in newness of heart. Our God and God of our mothers and fathers, grant that our worship on this Sabbath be acceptable to you. Sanctify us through your commandments, that we may share in the blessings of your word. Teach us to be satisfied with the gifts of your goodness, and gratefully to rejoice in all your blessings. Purify our hearts, that we may serve you in truth. Help us to preserve the Sabbath as Israel's heritage from generation to generation that it may ever bring rest and joy, peace and comfort to our lives, and through it your name be hallowed in all the earth. We praise you, eternal God, you sanctify Shabbat, creator of all the world. You have blessed us with noble powers. Teach us to make wise use of them. You have called us to be your partners in the work of creation, and so we thank you for the power to choose the path devoted to your service and dedicated to the well-being of those around us. May all that we do bring nearer the coming of your reign on earth. May all people find their way and help establish peace on earth. that justice and right are better than conquest and dominion. May they come to see that it is not by night and not by power, but by your spirit that life prevails. Bless our land with plenty and our nation with peace. May righteousness abide with us and virtue bring us happiness. Blessed are you, eternal God, who hearkens to prayer.
we now pray for healing for our loved ones as we say, Mishaberach avotenu ve'imotenu, O God who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, extend your blessing to all those who are in need of healing, especially to those who are stricken with COVID wherever they are. Heal them, O God, a refuah shlema, a complete healing. Healing of the body and healing of the, the spirit. Be with them, be with their healers, be with their physicians and nurses and first responders and families and especially be with them. May they know a refuah shlema, a quick healing and a full healing. Baruch atah Adonai Rofeha Chulim. Blessed are you, O God. You are the physician to the infirm. And together we say, Amen. A number of years ago, I experienced the joy of spending a week in an Orthodox yeshiva. The learning was intense, except for the leader of the class who knew that I was an HUC ordained rabbi. The students, all of whom except one, who was a contemporary of mine, were young people in their late 20s who were taking a few years off from their career pursuits to sit and learn Torah. And they didn't know that I, unlike they, had smicha, had a rabbinic ordination. Well, the subject of the study that week was Talmud, and it happened that the Masechta, or the tractate that we were learning, happened to be Sukkot, which, as the name states, is about the festival we are celebrating this week. The Rav, or the teacher of the class, talked about the observances of the festival as he had known them in his childhood. And though his religious affiliation from birth was fully orthodox, he described things that were mind-blowing to the other students of the class. For instance, even in the orthodox shuls, the orthodox synagogues of the Rav's childhood, the proliferation of lulavim and etrogim that you find in an orthodox and sometimes conservative though rarely reformed congregation today, virtually everyone has a lulav now or an etro of their own, but go back 50 years and typically there was only one lulav and etro present that everyone in turn said the blessing over and picked up and shook. You know, when I was growing up in our neighborhood reform synagogue in Chicago, of course there was a sukkah in the courtyard of the congregation. And we Sunday school students decorated it every year. But beyond, on the first night of Sukkot, yes, there was a service that night, and maybe the Shabbat during the festival, when we all went outdoors for the singing of the Yom Tov or Shabbat Kiddush by the cantor, that's all that Sukkot was. And that's all that the Sukkah was. 
And while the other synagogues of various denominations, and boy, there were loads of them in Hyde Park and Chicago then, they also had Sukkot in their courtyards. You didn't see Sukkot by people's homes in the neighborhood. So for us, the Sukkah wasn't something to dwell in or have meals in or maybe even sleep in. It was something simply for the synagogue to decorate and at best look at. Fortunately, it's different today. Given the preponderance of prefab Sukkot kits out there and the ability of people to own and afford Lulavim and Etrogim, even within Reformed communities, observing the festival is becoming a big thing. I have to tell you something. I'm terribly sad that because of the pandemic, CRT doesn't have our sukkah up outside of our home, something that at least people in the neighborhood, and maybe we too, can actually use in one way or another. And please God, you'll have a sukkah again next year. But what I'm even more sad about is that I, unlike in past years, when I had a large deck in my condo and always put up my sukkah, and our new condo with its very small deck, I don't have a sukkah, something which would be especially a religious natural, because on the top floor, as Janet's in my condo is, we'd have a clear shot above a sukkah all the way to the sky which is what one is supposed to have. But more than just having a sukkah, I can't dwell in it either. You know, in the past, I ate in it, sat in it, and even when the weather was right, slept in my sukkah. It was my home, the place where for a whole week I would relax, pray, meditate, contemplate the world. And even more than that, because of the mitzvah of inviting guests to one's sukkah, it was also the place where night after night, I pulled out all stops and cooked and served dinners to guests whom I invited over to make the celebration of Sukkot with and where for whom it also became alive for them just as it was for me. Well, my old days were going on until a very short time ago and I missed them. They weren't the old days of my childhood, rather they were the old days of the tradition which says that one is supposed to celebrate the festival in fulfillment of what the Torah says, God made us to dwell in Sukkot. But let's go beyond that to the real old days, not what people are doing now, but what they did way back then. And this is after biblical times too. What was the festival of Sukkot like back then? I saved this from an article on Sukkot as it was way back when. At this most joyous season of the year, with all the electric anticipation, along with the caravan, caravan trails, the stirring ceremonies, and the lively singing and feasting, the epitome of celebration in temple times took place surrounding a water ritual. It was called Simchat Beit HaShoeva, meaning rejoicing at the place of the water drawing. Every day of the year after the sacrifices were, sacrifice was burned, an offering of wine was poured on the altar. But during Sukkot, there was also a water libration. Some have suggested that it was a folk rite, an inducement for rain made by, by pouring out water at the season's onset, transformed by the rabbis into a symbolic temple ritual. You know, each morning of Sukkot, the priests went to the pool of Siloah, which is near Jerusalem, to fill the golden flask. And shofar blasts greeted their arrival at the temple's water gate. You could have gotten a job there. <laughs> they then ascended and poured the water so that it flowed over the altar simultaneously with the wine from another bowl. And when the priest was about to pour the water, the people shouted, raise your hand because of an incident that had occurred in a previous year. It seems that the high priest, Alexander Janaeus, by the way, lived between 103 and 76 BCE, showed contempt for the rite by spilling the water at his feet, which was a transgression for which the worshipers threw their etrogim at him. It's like throwing lemons, right? It is like throwing lemons. Well, anyway, based on Isaiah's promise, with joy shall you draw water up the wells of salvation. 
Rejoicing began at the end of the first day and took place every night except Shabbat. The Talmud regarded that one who has never witnessed the joy of the place of water drawing has never seen real joy in his or her life. And although the celebration was for the libation that would be made the next morning, it was named for the preparation for the ritual, the water drawing, which the rabbi said showed that getting ready was something of even greater merit than the mitzvah or commandment itself because of its positive effect on the person doing it. Well, the Talmud describes the festivities in detail from the lighting of an of immense candelabra set in the temple courtyard, each holding gallons of oil and fit with wicks made from priests' worn out vestments, which generated such intense light that they illuminated every courtyard in the city. And a Levite orchestra of flutes and trumpets and harps and cymbals accompanied torchlight ceremonies, processions rather, and men who had earned the capacity or real spiritual joy through their purity, character, and scholarship danced ecstatically into the hand clapping, foot stomping, and hymn singing crowds. Wild, huh? For a better idea of what this looked like, listen to this one. We can't imagine our distinguished sages as acrobats and tumblers but they were often agile physically as well as mentally. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel juggled eight lighted torches and raised himself into a handstand on two fingers, a gymnastic feat no one else could master. Others juggled, juggled eight knives or eight glasses of wine or eight eggs before leaders and dignitaries. Well, at dawn, as the rejoicing subsided, the priests enacted what some have identified as the transformation of another folk rite, one to rekindle a diminishing sun approaching the autumnal equinox. And with trumpet blasts, the Kohanim, or the priests, descended the steps to the women's court, marched to the eastern gate, turned their faces west to the temple, and proclaimed, our ancestors who were in this place stood with their backs to the temple and their faces eastward and worshiped the sun, but our eyes are unto God. Well, what all of this teaches us is that centuries ago, Sukkot wasn't the relatively simple observance of dwelling in a sukkah or waving a lulav and etrog. It was a humongous happening easily outdoing, if you will, anything that those of you who will venture down to Salem will see on Halloween. But the point is that it was religious and it was fully sanctioned by, non -rabbinic, by our rabbinic leaders as a way to observe our harvest festival. So what do we learn from this? We learn that religiously generated extravaganzas have been with us for a long time. And what's considered as, quote, solemn as the only way to do it isn't necessarily the only way. Sometimes observances that are fun really are the way to do it. And that's something for us out of this holiday to keep in mind. You know, I'm not suggesting, of course, that we pelt bad preachers with etrogim, especially with the price of etrogim these days, right? <laughs> You know how much an intro costs? Not fifty dollars, sixty dollars, seventy. They go up to one hundred and seventy-five dollars. No, I didn't spend that kind of money, Janet. <laughs> but I'm suggesting that we never be afraid of doing it differently from the way it was done in the past. You know, that's reform. But re reforming has been part of our tradition for a long, long time. So may we, therefore, in the spirit of the holiday, especially when we chart out how we're going to observe our sacred seasons allow ourselves to rethink what we've been told is the only way to do it and in creating new rituals, new practices, and maybe even new ways to do old practices, may we savor the excitement which can be ours as we walk forward into new paths. Lama sukatu, abatov sheli, 
That's a great one. I haven't heard that song since my own childhood. I love it. It's beautiful. Watch the sukkah, Daddy. Okay, um, we continue now with the adoration, and we all stand. May the time not be distant, O God, when your name shall be worshipped in all the earth, when unbelief shall disappear and error be no more. Fervently we pray that the day may come when all people shall invoke your name, when corruption and evil shall give way to purity and goodness, when superstition shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye when all who dwell on earth shall know that to you alone every knee must bend and every tongue give praise. May all created in your image recognize that we are brothers and sisters so that one in spirit and one in harmony we may be forever united before you. Then shall your reign be established on earth and the word of your ancient prophet be fulfilled. The eternal God will reign forever and ever. On that day, God shall be one, and God's name shall be one.
Our thoughts now turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people, the six million who perished in the Shoah, and those of every race, nation, and faith whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. The departed whom we now remember, Charlotte Levine, Stan Becker, whose passing this week is brought to mind right now, and Linda Bernstein, who is this week, whose yard site we observe this week. Are there other names of people whose memories we wish to recall? If so, speak now their names. They still live on earth in the acts of goodness they performed and in the hearts of all of us who cherish their memories. May the beauty of their lives abide among us as a loving benediction. We turn now to page 302, where we find the text of the Kaddish, and we all stand. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba. V'alma divrach erutei v'yamlich malchutei. Bechaye chon, uvyome chon, uvachaye de chol beit Yisrael, ba'agala uvizman chari v'yamru amen. Yehe shimei rabba mevarach, va'alam ulame almaya, yit barach, v'yishtabach, v'yit pa'ar, v'yit koman, v'yit nase, v'yit hadar, v'yit ale, v'yit halal, shimei de kudisha parechu. The Ela mean call Birchata Vish Shirata Tush Bichata Venechemata Da Amiran Mi Alma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabamin Shmaya Vachayim Alenu Vial Kol Yisrael Vimru Amen. O se shalom vim Roma Uya se shalom Alenu Vial Kol Yisrael Vimru Amen. O maker of peace in your place on high, make peace for us, for Israel, for all humankind, and together let us all say, Amen. Please be seated. We continue now with our closing Zemira, which is Eitz Chayim. The words are, it is a tree of life to those, in Hebrew, translated, it is a tree of life to those who hold it fast, and all who cling to it find happiness. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. It's Chayim Hilemachazikim Ba Betom Mechecha Mehushar Terecheha Tachenua Bechon Viyotecha Shalom Hashivim Oh, 
Continue now with the Kiddush. The festival of Sukkot teaches us to give thanks to God for the harvest of fruit and grain and to share all of nature's blessings with our fellow human beings. So let us then praise God with this symbol of joy as we express gratitude for the divine providence which has upheld us in all our wanderings and sustained us with nature's bounty from year to year. May our worship help us to live this day and every day in the spirit of this festival of Sukkot, with trust in God's care, with thanksgiving for the abundance of nature, and with the determination that all people must share the blessings of the earth, and must all of us might work soon and speedily to make the earth survive. And together we say, Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Barei pari ha'gafen. Gets better every week. <laughs> Amotzi lechem in haaretz, we give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together, as our prayer is joyfully said. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hamotzi lechem in haaretz. Blessed are you in coming here. Blessed be you in going forth from here. May the spirit of this festival be with you. May we remember always to give thanks for the blessings that are ours and at the same time to share those blessings with others. Together let us say, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos, everybody.